Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we will delve into further commands of the Sweet Home 3D interior design program. In particular, we will see how to modify colors, textures and materials, how to set up the outside of our house and insert characters. In the previous guide, we transformed an apartment into a villa consisting of a basement, a ground floor and a first floor thanks to the use of specific tools and the inclusion of stairs. To modify the project, log in into the Swift Home 3D website by clicking on the forum page in the support category. Once you have entered your credentials in the appropriate space, click on online. To open and modify our house, in my case name 02, we click on the edit button. The quantity of elements included in our project is starting to become significant, so it may take some time to visualize the furnished house. And here is our villa. Let's start by changing colors and textures and materials. As anticipated in lesson 03 of the course, by double clicking on any object, it is possible to change its color, texture and material. For example, let's double click on the table located in the living room. In the color and texture section, we can change the color by checking the box and clicking on the nearby rectangle. This will open a further window where we can choose the color from those proposed by clicking with the left mouse button or enter the code in HEX within the space. Once the color has been selected, we click on OK to close the color window and again to confirm the changes. Now we have our chosen color table. The same process can be applied with textures. We double click on the object, select the texture command by checking the box and click in the near square. The new window allows us to choose the texture from a list that uh, includes wallpaper, wood, water, metals, leather, ceramics and much more. At the top left we have a search bar to quickly select what we are looking for. For example, we write wood. To select the texture, simply click with the left mouse button and a preview will appear in the right square. With the commands located below, we can establish an offset in percentage, both along the X and Y axis. We can decide the angle in degrees and finally the scale. Once we have chosen the texture, we always click on OK to save the changes. In this way, we also saw how to apply a texture to an object. Going back with the undo command located on the toolbar, we can notice that the table is made up of multiple materials. In fact, we can see that the legs are neither the same color nor the same material as the top. This is because the 3D model of this table is composed of multiple elements that can be modified individually through a third command, unlike the color and texture changes made previously which identified the object as a single block. We double click on the object, select the materials function and click on modify. The new window consists of a preview, a list of elements and settings. The parts of the object can be selected by left clicking in the model material section. The selected elements are highlighted in light blue within the list and with a flash within the preview. Once the part to be modified has been selected, we can leave it unchanged, make it invisible, assign a color or a texture. Finally, we can establish the shininess of the material with the present slider. By selecting the color and texture functions, the same windows explained previously will open. For example, let's modify this table so that it has a wooden top and dark grey legs. In this way, we select the surface, click on texture and select it from those proposed. For example, choose an old wood and click on OK. Now we select the table legs, use the color function, choose a shade of gray and click on OK. We check the new features from the preview 
And once satisfied, we always save the changes with OK. And here is our modified table. The modification procedure to be used applies to all furnishings such as doors, windows, stairs, chairs, and obviously there will be objects that will have more elements to modify than others. Once the colors of the objects have been modified, let's see how to modify colors and textures regarding walls and floors. Let's start by double-clicking with the left mouse button on a wall. Within this window, we can find various functions. We can establish the start point and the end point in their respective categories, entering the values in centimeters in relation to the X and Y axis, and possibly choose the distance between the end points. The subsequent options allows us to choose the color, texture, and the finish between matte and shiny of the left and right side of the wall. Scrolling down, there is a little legend where we are told that the left side of a wall is at the left when you go through the wall from its start point to its end point. In the case of the selected wall, this will be the left side and this is the right side. Double click again to access the settings. To change color and texture, we use the same process used for objects. For example, let's choose a color for the left side, which corresponds to the kitchen wall. We assign a texture to the right side, which corresponds to the living room wall. In this case, I will try a wall with stones. In addition to changing colors and textures, we can modify the baseboard of both sides. By clicking on the button, we can add it by checking the box assign the same properties as the respective wall side, or choose an independent color or texture. Finally, we can establish its height and thickness. The other settings allows us to change the pattern in plan of the wall and its top color in the 3D view. Finally, we can decide between a rectangular wall with possible changes in height and thickness, or a sloping wall obtain it with an arc extent value greater than zero. To confirm, click on OK. This is the result of the changes made to the wall, the kitchen side and the living room side. If we want to modify this kitchen wall using the same procedure as before, we will also alter the office one. This is because it is a single wall that runs through two rooms. To solve this problem, first click with the left mouse button on the wall, then with the right, and select the split wall command. With the icons present, we reestablish the walls based on the surface of the rooms. In this way, we can modify the two walls individually. Having also fixed the wall of the house, internal and external, let's see how to modify the floors. In our case, we have established a single surface of 88 square meters inside the house. So if we want to establish different floors based on the rooms, it will be necessary to recreate the individual surface with the create rooms command. To do this, we need to delete the first surface and create new floors, retracing the walls of all the rooms. Once this step is completed, Let's do a double click on a surface, for example, that of the bathroom. As in the other cases, a new window will open, where we can name the area, make the square footage visible and attribute a color or texture to the floor, also selecting the finish between matte or shiny. We decided to apply a texture to the bathroom surface. We click on the command scroll along the list and choose one from those catalogued as floor. I would like to point out that this list also includes textures for rugs or carpets of all types. So once chosen, we click on OK. And this is the result. Within the settings, there are further functions that allows us to view the ceiling always ticking the box and assign a color or texture to it. For example, let's paint the bathroom ceiling. By changing the settings in the respective section, 
we proceed as already done in the previous situation and click on OK to save the changes. To view the ceiling, you need to change the view type. We click with the rightmost button on the 3D preview and uh, switch from the aerial view to the virtual visit. We position the observer inside the room, move the head through the appropriate icon or with the 3D preview, and here is our colored ceiling. The remaining settings within the Modify Rooms window allows us to modify the walls and baseboards adjacent to the selected surface. For example, in the case of the selected floor, the work subject to the modification will be this. However, I recommend modifying the walls of the house as demonstrated previously, as we can take advantage of more specific functions and tools. Once the floors and ceilings inside the house have been arranged, we insert the roof. In my case, having a roof window, I thought of creating a flat one. We click with the rightmost button on the workspace, select the add level command and generate a surface with the create rooms command, which also includes the walls of level 1. We then select the color or texture. It is also possible to use some types of roofs present within the miscellaneous section, which will however need to be modified depending on the size of the project generated. We can proceed with setting up the outdoor area. First of all, using the Create Rooms command, we could think of building a small avenue that leads to the entrance door and connected to a small area used for parking a car. In the remaining spaces of the front area of the house, we generate other surface that we can identify as a lawn or a garden. In the last phase, we use the methods explained during the guide to assign textures to the newly created floors. Now it's time to select the exterior category from the object catalog drop down menu. In this section, we can find objects, trees, plants, bushes, fences, and roads. We insert the elements by clicking, dragging, and dropping, then arranging them with the Select Object in Plan tool. I want to remember that while inserting objects, we must always check the level we are working on. The catalog of objects also presents the section dedicated to vehicles where we can find various types of transport to be placed outside our house or inside a garage that we can build with the same procedure that we use to create our project. The last category within the repertoire named characters allows us to insert animals and people into our environments. In particular, people can be found in different positions sitting, standing, laying down, static or dynamic. It will always be possible to modify these objects according to the method explained just now and during the previous lessons. With these last changes, we conclude the lesson. I remind you that having logged in to the Swift Home 3 d website, your project will be saved automatically so you can close the window without saving anything. In the next guide, we will see how to save, export and share our projects. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time. If you want to stay updated on new guides, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support us, subscribe to the channel as a supporter.